Welcome to the New to Wrestling Podcast, where I, your host, Xavier Cruz, a lifelong wrestling fan, will take a lifelong friend through the action, the joys, and the drama of the world of professional wrestling. My co-host, Kelsey Silva, has been bitten by the wrestling bug, and I want to invite you to join us as I take her through the moments that made me a fan. So if you're new to wrestling and would like to get brought up to speed, or a fan who would like to relive some classic matches, promos, and segments through fresh eyes, join us as we embark on a journey through the Attitude Era and beyond. Welcome to the New to Wrestling Podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the New to Wrestling Podcast. This week, we watched the October 21st, 1996 edition of Monday Night Raw, and the match card is as follows. We had Psycho Sid, who is the number one contender for the WWF Championship, versus one half of the tag team champions, Owen Hart, with Clarence Mason. We had the Smoking Guns versus the Godwins, and in our main event, we had Triple H versus Mr. Perfect, which ended up being Triple H versus Mark Miro. We will get to that. All right, let's it, get into we it. We will yeah. get to that. So first, I wanted to just say welcome back, everybody. Um, I'd like to just kind of start off by apologizing for kind of falling off the face of the earth for the last couple of weeks. Um, sometimes life mm-hmm. just throws you some some hands and you kind of have to reprioritize. Hands. Uh, so um, yeah, please believe life- us. It was completely out of our control and- <laughs> yeah if and we, there was hits, like literally no possible way like the hits just kept coming um so uh yeah. we are on the mend um and we're going to be recording uh an extra episode this week so that we can kind of get ahead of the game um but we appreciate you all staying with us and being patient um sometimes you just got to reprioritize your family your friends and then you know the fun stuff but now we're back yeah. and we're ready to back. pick up where we left off. In our previous episode, we watched the uh, Buried Alive pay-per-view, which left us with a lot of cliffhangers, which hopefully we will kind of start to sort through on this episode. All right, right. so the episode opens with a kind of a montage of um, Bret Hart's departure after WrestleMania. So essentially, uh, Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart had a 60 minute Iron Man match at WrestleMania the previous year. After that match, uh, Bret Hart lost um, and he t- essentially took his ball and went home. And we have not really seen Bret Hart much since. Um, so for the past six months, Shawn Michaels has been con- the champion, been the face of the company, and has been doing a killer job, like mm-hmm. absolutely phenomenal. So yeah. I have a quick question. Sure. So WrestleMania last year, was that at the Garden? I don't remember. Because I'm just wondering if, sorry, that's like a hard question. But I'm wondering like, because if it was at the Garden, that would be insane. That his like return to wrestling is also going to be at the Garden? I can. That's what I was wondering. Hold on, pause. Let's find out. WrestleMania 12. No, it took place in California. Okay, so never mind. Just ignore Mm, my question. No worries. Um, Mm -hmm. Okay. So Bret Hart will be making his return on this episode. Um, So they just kind of left us with a little bit of like a recap as far as when was the last time we saw Bret Um, Mm -hmm. and kind of all of the things leading up to his departure. So we get into our first match, which was Psycho Sid versus Owen Hart. So basically, uh, Psycho Sid won the number one contendership the previous night versus Vader. Um, That was a really hard hitting, just brutes smacking each other for a Mm -hmm. solid 15 minutes um and he has come out on top so now it is now the responsibility of the wwf to make psycho sid look as menacing as possible that is the point if you're going to be a threat you need to come out swinging um so during this match you kind of see a little bit of that in terms of like how psycho sid like overpowers owen and owen has to kind of get creative Um, being kind of one, the smaller opponent and two, being the more technical of the two um, Mm -hmm. doesn't really like get out of the blocks until Psycho Sid makes a mistake um, Mm -hmm. and gets Mm -hmm. distracted by the bulldog who makes his way uh, down the aisle at some point during the match, which allows Owen Hart to chop block him from behind, which thus sets up Owen Hart kind of attacking his legs for the next couple minutes of the match. Um, And that's kind of an intelligent way to kind of like work around, like, how do we get Owen like 
to also look good during this. Um, right, yeah. Not, like, I was he has say to that. find a, he has to be the smarter wrestler, the more technical wrestler. Um, whereas yeah. Psycho Sid is, is and should rely on his just brute strength. Uh, because right. that's what's going to get him out of a lot. And that's his bread and butter. And that's what wins him the matches. Yeah, I kind of love how they do that, um, where they like, you know, because Owen Hart is a is a very formidable wrestler and they don't want him to look weaker. And I know we've probably talked about this, but they yeah, don't right. want him to appear weak, but they also want Psycho Sid to appear strong. So they like put him up against somebody who's like a pretty high caliber, but then like make it like right. by taking him down a peg. And I think it was JR that was like, or no, maybe not JR, probably um, Jerry the King was like, you know what you know what they say if like a man is like too tall for you like gotta bring him down to your level or like said something like that and then like right. was literally taking him out of the right. knees to like bring him down which also i really want to quickly mention that um owen hart got a haircut and it the was glow up so surreal. real so real so real he looks incredible it, literally, incredible. literally uh he comes like out for like the first he comes around the court the the curtain and kelsey's like did he get i was like yes he did and she was like it's like a new person a, a different new, person so different and it's funny because i was like wow i don't even remember what he looked like before and then like on cue like somebody in the crowd was like holding up an older owen hart shirt and i was like oh yeah no i don't want to see that again and the, it, it feels oh! like a, a kind of like a hard cut um because um i was talking about this like yesterday whereas you know like when we were talking about like decades like all of the 80s kind of looks like the same font you know what I mean? Um, yes. But the first half of the 90s is very much the 80s. And then there's a yeah. weird, like, break. And then the second half of the 90s is, like, very much Nirvana. So, like, it's it, so it, it, true. Like, he, like, cu like, cutting the mullet was kind of like a, a the 80s is done. Like, it was very Mulan. Up. Very right. Mulan. Like, shing. shing. Like, <laughs> we're moving on now. Or, like, Prince Zuko. Like, shing. Like, his, cut the his top reflection knot. shows who he is inside. And, <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> swear though but like it's so true and i also feel like it's it's so serendipitous too like um because now his brother is which returning. we'll get to returning mm -hmm. but um he has the longer hair and like it's almost like too it's like that separation so it's like i gotta like i'm different and he oh is. it's like, like when he, ashley simpson dyed her hair black yeah a hundred percent like he's got to have that edge that difference like something that is um more distinguishing right you know right, right, right. i no, love I it agree. though Big and ups. that's kind of like always the unfortunate like the the thing with owen hart is that he because bret hart is so successful mm -hmm. like he almost always gets mentioned in the same breath and like he's right so and like this is like a widespread opinion he's like arguably like the most underrated wrestler that has ever come through the wwf the man just can, yeah. did not get his like didn't have enough time because of the way that you know he tragically died and didn't have the the same kind of like Wait, i didn't know that he died tragically yes i told you about this I did. Oh, I did. wait, you did. Oh my God. It was so traumatic. I, I just blocked it out. Yeah, right. It was traumatic for them all. But he, so oh, he like, God. you know, he runs out of time and he also, he was such a like stand up like dude. Um, He, as like the WWF kind of like becomes more like adult oriented, um, mm -hmm. he chose to not participate in some of those things um, because oh, he, I get that. He was very adamant that he like wanted his children to be able to watch what he did. Um, and so I'll, because the whole company was kind of going in a more like edgier, more adult like direction, he ended up kind of taking more of like a backseat, wow. which, you know, which is your decisions at the end of the day. Like, yeah, he, he still collected a paycheck and he did, you know, I'm sure he got to sleep well at night knowing like he stuck by his like m principles on that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, you know, the fact that um, one, his, his legacy is so clear and lives on and mm -hmm. that like he is like you know, like you said, he is still talked about as, unfortunately, it's under the, you know, underrated category, but like the fact that people do appreciate and respect, like what an amazing wrestler he was. Right. It's crazy. And, and it goes, yeah. And it goes to show, and a lot of the, like, even when we, they talk about him, like generally, a lot of it's like, they, they describe, you know, the person he was like, mm. yes, he was a phenomenal wrestler, um, but like through and through, he was a good person. Like, and that's, you lose some of that sometimes in wrestling, whereas like people get caught up in, you know, the fame and like, oh, I'm the one that sells all the tickets and right. I like now so I can have like hotel rooms full of women and I can go out and party till 6 a.m. and blah, blah, blah. Like he just never fell into that like trap. 
Like he was never yeah. about it. Um, so he was just such a stand up dude that like it just kind of you had to respect it. You know what I mean? Right. Like there was there there was no budging that guy. He he is who he says he is, and you're you, you have no choice but to just be like, yeah, all right, that 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 tracks. Wow. So, you know, flowers um, to Owen Hart. We love amen. you. Amen. We get kind of into the match. Owen's working on the leg. Uh, Psycho Sid kind of is using his muscle to like get out of certain like submissions. Um, he catches uh, Owen Hart in a choke slam um, where we get a, a peak of a sign in the crowd, uh, oh which my was God. absolutely heinous. And heinous. Because it just says hump his face. How did you get that in the building? How? There were it. No, I don't know. No None loss. lawless. And it's like, it's crazy because now you can't get in anywhere unless your bag is only four inches wide and translucent. Like you right. can like before it was no. backpacks, signs that said hump your face, hump his face. And like, just crazy. It was mm. unhinged. It was feral. I kind of miss it. Right. But it, the, okay. even there was another sign later on that said, Sunny makes me vomit. Right. And I was like, <laughs> right. And, and like this was a good time for like signs i wish that was more of a thing like today yeah, 100%. um i mean granted like i don't want to be the person behind the dude with the sign but like yeah i they're just so funny they're like, so, so good i appreciate it like i understand the caveat or the catch 22 where it's like you don't want to be the person like holding the sign that blocks the people behind you but at the same time like if you just hold it up for like it was like seconds, it was like it our still first like, memes you know like it yeah. really it really amen. really was man like, amen like ones at baseball games like you would see on tv and it was before they have like the lag now so you would just see it and it would be like i right <laughs> be like and, and, i suck number none <laughs> dick yeah oh my god so funny <laughs> i suck number 59's dick in high school <laughs> you're like congrats miss like, <laughs> good job babe oh my god yeah they too. really were the mm. wordplay, the imagery, and it was just you printer paper and a glue stick on a right. neon poster board mm -hmm. you got from CVS or Walgreens. Hundred percent, they Simpler brought that times. science fair energy to these signs. Swear, <laughs> like, swear to they God, really they really did. Um, so, but, um, Psycho Sid performs the choke slam and sets Owen up for the power bomb, and that is when the British Bulldog comes in and clotheslines. Psycho Sid in front of the referee, giving him the disqualification victory. Um, and then, of course, the two, being the tag team champions, start wailing on Psycho mm. Sid, um, which brings out Shawn Michaels, who comes out to uh, to the rescue um, and kind of starts popping off on the British Bulldog. They clear the ring. There's kind of a little bit of, like, tension between the two. Ooh, As the we know, it's building. It's um, building. They do shake hands, but it is, you can, like, look at Psycho Sid's, like, face and read his lips. And he's saying, like, thank you, but don't I don't help need me. your help. Yeah. I didn't ask for your help. I don't, I don't know why you felt like you had to come out here and save me. I don't need to be saved by anybody. Like, you can just kind of tell, like, that is, Ooh. that is the vibe. Um, which is yeah. kind of, like, you can kind of see them starting like week over week, just kind of like their friendship is just kind of like, yes, they're coming out and like supporting each other, but there is this like tension that's like, we will have to fight and I'm coming for your most prized possession. And there is no way to kind of like nicely do that. Right. It's very much giving the energy of like, um, like a family member that you like have to be cordial with at holidays, but like you really like low down, like there's something, there's like beef there. Like right. who's like, um, like a cousin or like a sibling where it's like, I want to host Thanksgiving when our parents don't do it anymore, but you think you're going to host Thanksgiving and that's not happening. And right. like, you, you know, you're getting closer to that age, but it's just like, mm, good to yeah. see you, Kathy, whatever. Like you, you know, a fight's coming, but like, yes, it's, it's, it's just it's now is not the right time. Biting, you know I mean? biding their time. Yes. A hundred percent. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's a slow that, that's a crock pot for sure a hot yes yeah, slow cooker slow um, cooker so they kind of like disperse and then we get a recap from the buried alive match from the night before um which i i cannot say enough phenomenal things about that match um, it was so good and it was amazing because xavier brought this to my attention because i i think i said this uh the last time we watched a pay-per-view but i was like it's so funny the episode after they just show like 
screen snapshots yeah. of the uh, like little snapshots and i was like that's so weird that they do that and xavier blew my mind he's like oh well they do that they don't want to show clips from the pay-per-view because they want people to pay for it like right. actually watch it so they just give like a little recap with just like images mm -hmm. yeah. and i was like oh my god that is so like it's obvious now to me why they would do that but that i was like wow that's like genius i love that because it, it gives you that intrigue right but that you're like, ooh, maybe I will buy it. Or like, mm, right. I kind of do want to see mm -hmm. like, you know, the Undertaker out, out of the blue get hit with a shovel by an executioner who we did not see coming at all. Like, right, 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 and the, right. Or the lightning strike, um, the tombstone or the headstone, which also we were discussing, like, who do we think has the headstone? Do we think it's like, in a museum? Do we think it's in like the... I feel, well, I think like uh, Triple H as part of his like role or whatever. And and that show, the like hidden treasures, blah, blah, blah. Yes. Blah. You're yeah, spending yeah. a lot of time like archiving a lot of that stuff, I think with the intention of doing like a like a museum, like a destination museum. Because I uh, think they, like there is a small one. Right. Like, but, but it's I, in an arena. Like it's like adjacent they, to they something. they kind of they pull it out um during like WrestleMania like weekend, like they'll build up like a oh, pop-up one. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, where they have all these like artifacts and things and fans can go like look at it and blah 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 and they do it like you know for other events and stuff but i think i i think large scale like the goal is to have like a, a place where everything kind of lives i would uh, love that, that to be honest just, like you know it becomes its own like attraction you know which would be sick because i i always am, am amazed by that kind of stuff and i think we've talked about this already but like the detail, the fact that they had, they legitimately got a headstone and carved these like beautiful portraits into it and like have the date and everything. And it was like actually then used as a prop in the match. Like is, cra is a crazy dedication to detail and aesthetic right. that like should be honored and like put in a museum somewhere. Right. It should because be in a museum like okay. Indiana Jones, but like, I'm, I just- It's so easy to cool. overlook those things because like, yeah. if you really like think about it, like the headstone, we saw it a grand total of like four times. Like it was right. the- when they showed up on like the stage in Raw and then like during the like pay-per-view match. So it's easy to just kind of like be like, oh, like that was a nice thing. And then you forget about it and you never acknowledge it. But there's so many like minute details that go into making such a like spectacle happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, that like if you can take a moment and like appreciate it, like you should because that's a lot of work to entertain people. Like it's not easy as you know, it's one, you're never going to entertain everybody. That's just the rule. But yeah. like when you have thousands of people like and they paid their good hard money to like come be entertained for a night and forget their lives like you got to do it like you got to do it. And to me, it's always worth it like to to invest that type of energy and money and whatever time into doing those things like you get remembered. For, like I just feel like it's always worth the investment whatever right. the investment ends up being. It, it's always it's like that's just, like you you get what you put into you get out uh -huh. what you yeah put you, in. Like, yes you get out what you put in 100 percent. so, so like you know if you're gonna like half-ass it and like not make it look good people are gonna see right through it. like they're gonna so yeah they're gonna real. see right through it they're gonna get bored and then they're gonna get annoyed that you tried to pass off something that wasn't worth their money you know what I mean? yeah yeah oh so true it's like you said especially when people are are paying money because if at the end of the day like a pay-per-view is it really is like a luxury buy yes, like correct. people don't need to buy a pay-per-view to continue living i know uh, some people will argue but like right you know it's a luxury item and like people putting spending money on it is meaningful so right. like you should invest the energy into making it something worth their wild right i agree or worth their while right, right. <laughs> <laughs> worth their wild whatever um and then during that entire recap, um, Kelsey just goes, not O Fortuna, just playing like <laughs> aggressively over the entire recap. It's the funny, whole song. Like it's the, like front to end, like they gave us the whole thing while they Top like to went bottom. over this. It was it was just like so aggressive because there's you know that, that song's just so epic. Like there's no it's way for the to... drama. Oh yeah, for the drama. Anything for the drama. Again, if you're gonna invest, you might as well invest, and it better be for the drama, at least for me. Amen. But yeah, top to bottom, O Fortuna. And I know this because I played it in band. When I <laughs> <laughs> Clock. Um, all right. So the following match, we had the Smoking Guns versus the Godwins with Hillbilly Jim. Um, the Smoking Guns are coming off of a um, tag team championship rematch loss uh, mm. because they are, they have different priorities. Um the two, it's very the two clear. smoking guns and it is becoming more and more obvious that they are 
nowhere near the same page. Uh, no. The Godwins once again have come out with their with their uh, animals with some little this piggies. Times, yeah, two little piglets who are screaming. <laughs> Absolutely losing their mind. Wailing. Why? Because what business do these people have just bringing out farm animals? I know it. And then they like, it was so funny because they took the piglets on like a tour. Like they oh, took them to they, like the international announcer's lap. table and shook their hands, which I actually... I was going to say this, like, I really have such a fondness in my heart for the Godwin brothers. I don't know what it is. The farm animals is kind of weird because I'm just like these poor animals. Cause then they just kind of like, when they get into the ring, they just kind of like pass them to some guy and the guy like takes them out. And it's just kind of right. weird, but they like went to every table and like shook everyone's hands, like every announcer mm. and like showed them the pig, like was showing the pigs to like kids in the audience. Yeah. I was like, oh. what is this? Like they were, a- they were loving it. They were living it. Loving life. it. It was like a um, what do you call it? An assembly. Like when oh. the farmer comes to like a, the, like your middle school and like shows oh, you like sure. little farm animals. It was like, but yeah, here. They were stoked. Um stoked. So while they were doing that, they wrote go over to like the main announce table and JR or I'm sorry. Jerry the King starts freaking out that one of the pigs like pissed on him. <laughs> and JR says the most brutal thing I've ever heard. And Wait, he, like, I totally t- missed this. He turned no, he turns around uh like so he's like, oh, like the pig like peed on me. He's like, um, you've been wearing the same jacket for 20 years, so it was time to upgrade anyway. So like <laughs> and I was like, I was like, Jim Ross, you are that bitch recently regina george couldn't even he is the oh, meanest girl, meanest girl. <laughs> he is the meanest girl he's the lady. meanest girl in the lunchroom oh my god that is vile i did not even hear that dude it was so wow. funny because it was just so like matter of fact he's just like you've been wearing the same jacket for 20 years it's it's time so I'm glad the pig pissed on you. <laughs> like, damn. Uh, this is a. It, it ends up being like a very back and forth match. Um, I, there's speculation that whoever wins the match becomes the number one contender. None of this is like confirmed, so mm-hmm. I didn't didn't really put too much stock into that. But we do have a another communic- miscommunication from the smoking guns. Uh, Billy is on the outside trying to get into the ring to aid. Uh, Bart, which is by the way, the name Bart. Oh. Please. We can do better. Um, Put it to rest. Like, is that short for something? Like Bartholomew? <laughs> I was just going <laughs> like, 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 I was, I was about to, like, move on, and I just couldn't. Like, I, I was I, thinking, I was literally like, is it Bartlett? Like, what is it short? Bartlett. Uh, uh, here's my Bartholomew? son, Bartlett. That's what I thought. Like, Yeah, I don't know. We don't need it anymore. Just, um, we don't let it rest. Um, so anyway, so Billy's trying to get We don't need Billy the- either, to be honest. But anyway. <laughs> Billy is trying to get into the ring and Bart <laughs> um gets uh thrown into the ropes, uh smacking Billy hard on Ford. the floor. And that allows um the Godwins to give the slop drop and get the pin, thus giving the smoking guns yet another loss. Um, which I'm telling you, we we are barreling towards those two feuding. Like there is- I kind of can't wait. I I thought it was going to pop off right then and there because they started fighting in the ring. Billy was like, why would you do that? And it's like, why were you on the apron in my way? Like I could have bounced off the ropes. Like this is your fault. Like the the constant going for the high five and missing is is... crazy. Especially when it's a tag team match and the high five is kind of important. Right, 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 right. It's like kind of the point of the match. (laughs) It's, it's kind of the one thing you need to do like yeah like oh god um so that's coming that little splitsville is on its Ooh. way um and next we it cuts to a uh, a little segment mr perfect's like backstage i guess getting ready for his match warming up or whatever mm-hmm. um and triple h just comes by and pushes one of the like sound equipment like crates um just like into his leg and then that's kind of how they like leave it. It's just like Triple H pushes Mr. Perfect, perfect, laid out, moving on to the next thing. Right? Yeah, it was it was odd. And I, right. it was like one of those things that you if you blinked, you would have missed it. And like I, I felt I, like it, I did. Like yeah, I was I literally felt like writing it, down like a note from the previous segment <laughs> and I missed the whole thing and Kelsey had to like backtrack it and like spell And the it only out reason he knew is because I went, ooh. <laughs> yeah. No, and I looked up. I was just like what <laughs> because it was and i feel like because we'll get to it but it becomes a very crucial plot point in right. 20 minutes and i feel like they just 
flew right through it. And I was like, wait, did that really just happen? I'm so confused. And I thought it was just like, again, we'll get to it, but I thought it was just like pre-match, like whatever, Mm -hmm. but it ends up being, um, a lot more. Yeah. But before we get there, we have the return of Brett, the Hitman Hart. So that has been a long time coming. So long time, long time coming. So the, he hasn't been seen really since WrestleMania. There was like a interview kind of segment, a, like a couple on like a cruise ago. ship, yeah. right? Um, but in the flesh hasn't happened during this time. We know Stone Cold has been calling out this man week over week, mm-hmm. as trying to get this man to show face. Mm-hmm. So and JR is in the ring and is kind of just like, all right, like, so what is next for the hitman? Is he retiring? Or is he coming back? Is he going to work at, at the office in the WWF? Like, what's the deal? Um, Bret Hart then explains that he was in talks with the rival promotion, WCW, and they made him offers, um, which they are want to do. That's their thing. They... Um, mm-hmm had made quite the reputation of going in, offering WWF wrestlers a lot of money and taking them. So as Bret Hart is explaining this, you see they like cut to Vince Vince McMahon and you can kind of see on his face, like he's like, oh my God, like why did I give this man a microphone? Like what is, Mm -hmm. what is he about to say? Like, is he about to bury my entire company? Like on the mic live? And you can see just, it's just kind of like, like something he's like, visibly like, getting like nervous and a little upset like he's like yeah like the tea kettle is starting to steam right for sure um and then bret hart kind of gives us the swerve and is like i'm gonna be with wwf forever um basically he's he chalks it up to he his fans and where they have come and supported him and mm-hmm. that he would like to continue to look, like repay them and you know build that relationship here where they are um, yeah and his man literally was like, whew, oh my God. Like, <laughs> like, literally it takes fell a seat, into yeah. his chair. Yeah. Um, so that was that. So we get, you know, Fred Hart is here. Obviously, I mean, he's on a WWF television show making the announcement. So we kind of, you know, assumed that's what w- was happening. Right. Um, but the swerve that kind of like got me is you get him saying that when he left, after WrestleMania, it really looked like he was just big pissed about what went down. Right. Um, so the fact that he then comes back and goes and tells um, give, tells the audience, like, Shawn Michaels beat me clean. Like, I there is no, like, excuses. Like, that is Crazy. what happened. Um, which was kind of like a, a very much a like a 180 as far as how he left. Because it looked right. not like that. Um, right. But he does go on to say, like, mm. there's something about you, Sean, that I just, that just bugs me. That just right. doesn't sit right with me. And, and he said something at first where it was like, oh, um, you're not my enemy, but oh. you are my opponent. Yeah. And I thought that was really, like, a great distinction. I, I loved that a lot. Right. But then he went on to say, but there is something about you that just really bugs me. And everyone was like, the fact the crowd turned on Sean Michaels so quick uh, like it was no no no. like the, the um oh. because he goes like there's something about Shawn michaels i just so like and everyone was like yeah woo and i was like all of you when he came out to defend psycho sid 30 minutes ago losing his we're losing your beans as was i right where is that energy right so quick the peanut mm-hmm, gallery mm-hmm. and um and that that's like very much so real like they just have very differing personalities, very different views about how wrestling should and can be done. And at this point in time, Shawn Michaels is essentially being primed to just take over Brett's spot. Brett Mm. was the champion for a long time. He was the guy for the WWF for a long time. So of course, Brett's going to take some umbrage to the fact that there's somebody like he still he still feels like he's in his prime. He can still do he can still wrestle at the same caliber he's always wrestled at. Mm-hmm. Um, so to feel like somebody like you're getting replaced with someone younger, faster, a little more brash is going to rub you the wrong way. Um, right. So there is like a real animosity on like a personal level that like mm-hmm. 
one, they have their their personalities class just based on the way that they are. And two, like the positions that they're in, like it's probably not easy to be Shawn Michaels and being set up to be the person that's going to be like taking over someone's spot. That's not a comfortable mm-hmm. no. thing to be in. But mm. there is this like widely known like expression in the WWF or like, you know, wrestling generally, like if you're not in it to be the world champion, why are you here? Right. Like if that's not your goal, like then why are you even bothering? Like do does everybody make it there? No. But if that's not like what you're working towards, then what's the point? I mean, so that must like... be, sorry. No, go ahead. I was gonna say that must be like the the most insane, like ping ponging of emotions. Because again, like you said, it's like, you don't, it's hard to be like, you're the one being primed to take over somebody's spot, but it's also like your dream and what you've been right. working for forever. And it's like, maybe that person is someone you really respect and you don't really want it to go down this way, but like, what else are you going to do? Like that must be right. an, an insane. And this whirlwind. is. The next like year, year and a half between Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels, it's just gonna get worse. Um, I'm just gonna let you know. Like they do not like each other. And like it slowly becomes a more and more personal thing. Because I was gonna say, do they not like each other in real life? Yeah. So no, well they I think they I in real life, I think they like they're not like friends you know what i mean like they they're Mm. not they're just not people that like personally like vibe with each other you know what i mean Mm. like i don't think they're like at this point in time i don't think they're like actively feuding like outside Mm -hmm. of the world of wrestling um but they're certainly not like they're not running in the same circles let's just put it Mm. that uh we kind of then back onto like the the promo uh we start getting like camera cuts to the backstage area where most of the roster is watching this announcement because Bret Hart was the guy. So they want right. to know is the guy coming back because chances are if someone that was that high up on the card is returning, guess what happens to everybody else? Mm-hmm. So um there's a lot of people watching backstage that want to know like where what does this mean for me then? Yeah they're getting the tea. Um so uh we find out that he does accept the match uh, against Stone Cold Steve Austin, which should be Crazy. taking place at Survivor Series, uh, which is the following pay-per-view that we're working towards. So that happens. And then he goes on like a very, another very long-winded story. Um, so I will funny. say as much as I love Bret Hart, he is not the most eloquent of speakers. He... Um, has a tendency to kind of get find the long way to the point. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was he's very, very long winded. And there is there's definitely something about him. Like he has that appeal. Right. But he is very long winded. And he told this like very harrowing story, but it was like very long and it was very like back and forth. And it ended with like and the little boy that died was my nephew. And I like promised him on his deathbed that I would come back to wrestling. And it was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I did not, that's not where I thought this story was going. And then he was like, I'm happy to be back. Bye. And we were like, wait, what? Okay, we'll see you later. Yeah. um... It was was insane. But also I want to mention, this was crazy. They did a cut scene to the back and we got our first glimpse of The Rock. Which I'm pretty sure was a mistake. Was it a mistake? He hasn't debuted yet. Which is because I was like, you were because you like freaked out. And I was like, what, what, what? And then I looked and you were like, it's The Rock. And I was like, oh my God, that is The Rock. And so, he yeah. was like standing like right next to like, um, like TL Hopper and like, what's his face? Yeah. Like, so yeah, the and most I, random I think assortment. We caught, of like, a, like a little like oopsie because he hasn't, he hasn't debuted as far as we know. I'm like 95% sure he debuts on this pay per view coming up. Um, oh, well, and so, it is interesting because he was in the first cut. And then when they went back later, he was he not there. in it. They yeah. like cut him out of it. And I was like, oh, that's crazy. But I, but he was definitely, that was definitely him. Oh, oh, I can spot Dwayne Johnson. It, from, <laughs> Everyone listen, can. I've been point. watching that man since I was two years old. I can spot Dwayne yeah. Johnson. Right, um, right, right. But like, I was like, oh. but yeah, he hasn't made his debut yet. So I think we we caught a little oopsie by um, so the crazy. On that one. Um, So now let's get to the main event. Oh, so, 
Oh my God. How did, I did we not get see to this movie. main event? So the last couple of weeks, we have had Mr. Perfect coming down from wherever he comes down from <laughs> and to interrupt all of uh, Triple H's matches with the intention of stealing all of these women that Triple H brings to ringside. Um, they don't have names. They don't have stories. <laughs> they are just plot points. So, so sad. So for the past like month, Mr. Perfect has been coming down to the ring, plucking these women with just a, a, a sweet nothing in their ear, and then they go. So this has been happening over and over again. And eventually, you know, understandably, Triple H is like, what's going on? I don't mm -hmm. I'm like, hello? To the point where he handcuffed the last woman to the ring. So never forget. Which didn't matter because she got got anyway. So like it Yeah, like, like Mr. Perfect with like a basic magician was like shing shing key and right. then paid off the guy who gave him the key. Right. Anyway, so Triple H makes his entrance and then we Mr. Perfect's music hits and he comes out with an entourage. So not only is it Mr. Perfect limping his way down to the ring, he is joined by Mark Miro with Sable and mm. Uh, the WWF president, Gorilla Monsoon, and they're making their way down to the ring. Um, making their way the downtown, walking yeah. fast. Faces, faces pass. pass in their homebound. So like, <laughs> they're like they're making their way down and everyone's confused. Like the, so uh, weird. the commentators are like, what's going on? Um, so Jim Ross climbs into the ring, um, not without giving his two cents to Vince McMahon first, being like, I got this, Vince. Don't worry, I'm the real professional. And then he's like, what's going on? <laughs> and I was like, okay, the real professional. Um, uh, well, I even forgot JR was there because it was so chaotic. I was just like, oh, well, but yeah. I forgot about that, where he was like, sit down, Vince, I'll go. Right. So basically, it is, it is revealed to us that the doctors have told Gorilla Monsoon that Mr. Perfect cannot or should not wrestle this evening. Which so, I was pissed big pissed because i was right. like they i've been waiting been to see mr perfect for so wrestle long. forever right. and now he gets hit by a little little sound box and he's out of commish like Done. i was so mad i was like right. oh come on but Done. all right keep going keep yeah going. yeah so mr perfect starts you know going in on triple h being like oh you think you did something like you come in and like attack me from behind and like now they're telling me like i can't wrestle like y'all like big man blah 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 and he goes what i've done is I have uh, asked Mark Miro, the stand-up guy, that I have helped win the Intercontinental Championship. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's like the the manager that like likes to take credit for. Like, it, he's like Michael Scott. So, mm. yeah, like he just takes credit Big for everything, team. even though it's like he had very little to nothing to do with it. Um, says that he is wants to, that Mark Miro wants to take his place. Um, Triple H is having none of it. He's like, I'm not contractually obligated to fight Mark Miro. So no. Um, and basically Triple H then like thinks about it. He's like, the only way I'm going to do it is if he puts on the Intercontinental Championship. And immediately Mr. Perfect is like, he'll do it. He'll do it. He'll definitely do it. Like, what kind of champion are you? A if you mess. Like, defend? like, so a mess. Immediately jumped in and was like, eh, like, he'll definitely do it. He'll definitely do it. Um, and then Gorilla Monsoon steps in and is like, um, you don't make matches. Like, chill. you can't sanction a match unless right. I say so. And so mm -hmm. Mr. Perfect's like, okay, then sanction the match. Right. Let's go. So he goes, so Gorilla turns some like, uh, Mark Miro's like, uh, if he's willing to put up the title and he's willing to accept like let's do it and then they're like let's get it on so we get so suddenly we have an intercontinental championship match in the main which event. is ridiculous because they had a tournament the last time they wanted to put the title on the line where they had to like fight it was like a bracket you had to be the contender it was a whole thing it was a whole thing and whole now they're like thing. yeah let's just do it like what is I was literally like, what is happening right now? This is such a mistake. I was mm -hmm. like, I'm so confused. And I was like, if Miss, if Triple H, after all these L's he's taken over the last month and beyond, suddenly whips out the moves during this match and wins the, I'm gonna lose my mind. So, spoiler alert, I lost my mind. <laughs> um, so, uh, it's a, it's so athletic and like Great Triple match. H is really coming is. out hot. Like Triple H, it has counters. He's like looks real good. He's but 
just like a different wrestler than we have been seeing for the last yeah whatever we have like this little moment outside of the ring where uh mark miro is about to like dive onto triple h and he pulls sable in front of him and which such such a coward move um and sable you know breaks free and slaps the taste out of his mouth Mm. just like absolutely decks him Um, decks him so, I feel like she heard her ears ringing because, like, I when I said like she needed to get in there, she was in there this she was match. In there she this got one. involved in this match. Yeah. I was so here for it. So she slaps him. Triple H gets like back in the ring. Mark Miro does the sickest moonsault mm. ever. Once again, he's like he like flips on like while standing on the top rope and then does the moonsault, and it's crazy. just beautiful. It's beautiful. It's so he's well amazing. Done. Um. So that happens. We think he's going to pull out the victory. He gets a two count. Triple H then proceeds to knock the knock Mark Miro into the referee um, in the corner, which knocks the referee down. Triple H then runs out and grabs a chair, brings it into the ring, and then Sable, MVP Sable, jumps in and like tries to like grab it from Triple H and does successfully does like, amazing. It. Well, she so, catches it on like the back swing, and I was like, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. And then Mister Perfect jumps into the ring, grabs it from Sable, and we think like, oh, like he's gonna like hit. Tri- it looks like he's gonna hit Triple H. But as this is happening, Mark Miro is stand like getting to his feet, and when uh, Mister Perfect goes to like swing at Triple H, he like swings wide. And hits Mark Miro. He turns on Mark Miro. And Sable loses her mind. She's as she should screaming at like the top of her lungs. So like the referee starts getting up and she runs to the other side of the ring and like gets in his face. She's like, she hit up or he hit up with a chair. And she's in a full length sequin (laughs) gown, jumping off the ring, running around the side, trying to get the rep. I was like practically in tears. And screaming. Triple H drags Mark Miro's like lifeless body up into the pedigree and wins the title. He wins the Intercontinental Championship. And Mr. Perfect is the one that goes and gives it to him. Apparently, they've been in cahoots this whole the time. Whole time. It's snakes in the grass because the bitch ain't cut. I was <laughs> so pissed. I was like, oh, were... this was uh, I literally I, can't, uh, I I am my heart is pounding just thinking about it again because the long con of it all and then I was like and that's why the women went with him so easily it was a part of this whole mm-hmm. conspiracy I was losing my mind I was like all of these trust issues that I thought I've gone gotten over I've mm. I've <laughs> are just being unraveled thread by thread by WWE okay. what in the fresh hell is this <laughs> dude what is this that mr perfect who i was like oh he's not gonna wrestle it's so weird like i thought that the sound booth thing was just because he like in his personal life wasn't ready to wrestle again Mm. and they're just looking for an excuse and this is going to be another put down on triple h are you kidding and why why to mark miro like what is that i don't can't even do i have so many questions i'm I'm so shocked we'll find out this is like This is like, am I missing the signs? Like, is my intuition off? Because like, I didn't see Paul Bear coming at all. Not, not at all. And this, uh, I was no like- No one saw Paul Bear coming. That was that was a that busy was for crazy. everybody. Because like, that was six years of being on The Undertaker's coattails before I mean, anything. Uh, I'll never get over that. I'll this came out of left field that. because like, left up field. until this point, like they were like, Mr. Perfect and Triple H were like at each other's throats. Like they were playing that part well. I just so, don't- I would. I need. They better explain themselves. Well, they better. I mean, I'm, sure, I'm sure they'll, they they'll have to. try. Um, like I, I, because I, I thought I was so shocked. I thought he did it by accident. I thought he. It was one of those like whoopsies. But he's nope. Mister Perfect. He doesn't do accidents. No, I'm no. livid. I'm livid, and I'm just beyond. And I, I, I have no more words. And that's where they left us. That's with, where they left it. With a new Intercontinental Champion, Hunter Hearst Helmsley out of the blue out of the blue after Which like puts an end to kind of his long kind of punishment right after um you know the incident at madison square garden so I just i just can't believe they gave away the title like that they're like yeah put it on gorilla monsoon is like well if you both say yeah sure let's just do it what mm, the so. whole there was like 
a whole they're just using whatever i, know. I just i know I'm so I know. beyond done but I, like <laughs> that's when it's done well you get that reaction i was i wish you guys could have seen it because i was so unprepared for this i was literally freaking i I screaming was just like no sweating <laughs> like, my heart was pounding I was checking my pulse to see if I was still alive uh, like dude, I I know I know they really do be twisting and turning on you Mr. Perfect that and I still haven't seen him wrestle I'm so mad <laughs> all of that for what for what uh, stealing women and not wrestling and making me pissed off <laughs> just stay tuned really oh uh, all right, guys. So that was this week's episode of the New to Wrestling podcast. As always, we appreciate you guys coming out and listening to us wherever you find us. Um, and we will be back next week with another edition. Thank you. Yeah, see you then. Bye. Bye.